Hello there, Codemaker4 here. Today I'd like to show off a Verlet integrator physics engine I made in JavaScript. So if you just refresh the page here, it's gonna create 3,000 small tiny balls and it's gonna simulate physics between them. Um, just to demonstrate that this does actually work, uh, you can just change the window size and the balls will react to that. You can also see how the hexagonal uh, structures form. So here there's a bit of a break between the two square corners. Um, and here there's an entire blob that has a slightly different angle. So you can definitely do a few interesting experiments with this. Sometimes there's also these uh, faults where there is no ball, even though there should be. Again, these also happen in the real world. So this is really a realistic physics engine. Steve Mould also did some experiments with how this works in the real world. I'm going to leave a link in the description and in the top right corner of the video, so you can check that out. All the code for this is on GitHub, and there's definitely some things that aren't enabled right now. For example, here's some code that reads out data from the accelerometer of your mobile device uh, to change the uh, gravity direction. But this is turned off now because there's more balls than fit on an average mobile screen. Uh, this is the rope ball engine object. Um, and as you can see, I don't have an array of balls. I have a object inside the rope ball engine that has a bunch of uh, typed arrays. Now, typed arrays in JavaScript are a way to create uh, really fast and optimized arrays that are designed to only take one type of number. Normal JavaScript arrays can have all kinds of mixed types and can have extra properties and you can do really weird things with them that you shouldn't be able to do with normal arrays and th that comes with a performance cost and this takes that performance cost away. But of course that does also mean that you can't put objects in these arrays, they need to be the raw numbers. So what you usually do if you want to go look at the ball let me find a good point here. Here, so this that balls that x i. Usually, th this i would be over here, because we have, have an array of ball objects, and we take the x property of that object. But instead, we take from the object that has all the properties of all the balls. We take the array of x properties for all the balls, and then they take the correct index. Of course, with these numbers, you can do all the normal math operations. I'm choosing float32, that has enough precision. You could also go with float64, but it's gonna take up twice the amount of memory. Memory isn't really a problem, neither is performance. I'm kind of going to the limit of my computer. It might be too much for your computer. Again, just clone the code on GitHub and change all the numbers around if you want. Um, if you go to performance and take a quick uh, preview on how it looks. So the main thread um, doesn't really seem to be doing much. It's mainly just system. And I have absolutely no clue what this is. But it probably has to do with the fact that the main thread doesn't really do anything except for drawing the balls. So as you can see, it's just going to draw the balls, but that's it. It doesn't actually do any calculation. How does that work? Well, there's a second thread. And this one here does all the calculations for the ball physics. And this one is kind of full. Perhaps I should have... This one doesn't seem to really quite be able to handle it, but that's partially because I'm also recording at the same time. Without recording, it performs a little bit better. So it uses two threads in total. One is the main thread, which does mainly rendering and user interface. And the other one is just for the physics. So what happens is that at the beginning, when you start the website, the main thread is going to tell the physics thread uh, what's going on, what are the settings that we are going to be using. And then the physics thread just bombards the main thread with data from all the updated positions from the balls and the main thread just kind of deals with it. Uh, this is the rope ball thread. I am actually quite happy with the way I'm doing messages. So if you want to send a message to a separate thread or worker as it's called in JavaScript, uh, you can only send off over one object and the object I'm sending over is an array. 
the first item of the array is always the kind of message we are sending. So here we are, so here we are receiving messages. We're taking message the data zero. So the first argument is just going to be a type, and you can just use a large switch statement. I'm quite happy with how this works because of how everything had to be structured because of the typed arrays. It's the code can be a little bit hard to read, but it is something you can get used to. Again, all the code is at GitHub at github.com slash codemaker forward slash rope ball. I am adding, planning to add um, ropes to this, with the idea being that you can create larger objects by just connecting balls together. I'm starting to really like the type of videos where I just show off a random side project I've been doing, um, because it isn't that much effort for me to create, other than actually doing the side project. And doing the side project is something I really enjoy, and I also learn a lot from it, so it's going to be helping with my general life later on, not just the YouTube life. Anyway, some code maker for subscribe. Bye.